It's your brother, Lanry Adenekon, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel. I'm bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Lanry Adenekon Center for Inspiration. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth on how to make God open a door before you. Coming from Revelation chapter 3, 7 through 9. We are praying now. Father God, we give you glory and praise and honor. Thank you, Almighty God, for your help to us here at all times. So God, take all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. We go on to share your word now. We receive help from you as always in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Revelation 3 from 7 now. Okay. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write this thing, says he who is holy and who is true and who has the key of David and who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your work. See, I have said before you an open door and no one can shut it because you have little strength. You have kept my word and have not denied my, my name. Indeed, I will make this of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Okay? That's the little bit we are reading today. Alright, so uh, the typical introduction, you know, for with every of these messages to these churches or to the leaders of these churches, uh, there was a little aspect of the general introduction from the beginning. He'll pick, pick a bit or two of it and say to introduce himself. So he says that, uh, this is the person who is holy and who is true. Hallelujah. So he went on to say, he who has the key of David. Now that is interesting because he's actually was, he was actually quoting, uh, was quoting from the book of uh, Samuel. If I get it very, very well. I hope I get it. Uh, time, 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 time. No, I can't find it here. Anyway, he was uh, trying to talk about uh, certain uh, truths that these people, they, they hold on to so dearly. Hallelujah. No, I can't, I can't find it. I can't find it. Anyway, hallelujah. And he was trying to quote from the Old Testament, it was talking about uh, the key of David. And that actually describes some things, really. Uh, okay, let me see what I can find here. Praise God. Oh, sorry. Yeah, time, 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 time. <laughs> So it's Isaiah 22, 22. That's where, not, not from Samuel 22. Isaiah 22, 22. It's the key of the house of David. I will lay uh, upon his shoulder. It shall open and no one will shut. It shall shut and no one will open. That's it. It's Isaiah 22, 22. That's where, that's where I'm supposed to, not for Samuel 22, 22. All right then. So uh, Jesus was quoting from that particular a scripture it says that that which the Lord promised, you know, through that mouth, the mouth of Isaiah, it was saying now that I have that, and that's it as I have, I have it with that key. It is such a key that um, he who has it opens and no one is able to shut, and he who shuts with it shuts and no one is able to open. Now, it's saying a number of things about this particular thing about um, the key and also about David. Hallelujah! Number one, it's talking about the royalness of it. the regalness of it hallelujah being um of david and that is talking about accessibility because key is it means accessibility it symbolizes accessibility you know and then again when he talks about when he opens no one can shut when he shuts no one can open he's talking about invincibility you know this person cannot be conquered when he does it he stays hallelujah so those are the things that that key represents, and God promised it, as we read just now in, in Isaiah 22, 22, that's why we read it from, it's a promise of God, and it holds those things. Number one, the royalness, or the regalness of it. Number two, the accessibility, because that's what a key represents. And number three, the fact that with it, when you do 
it's 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 final it cannot be reversed hallelujah so he's talking about invincibility uh, that's the way he was describing himself i have that key that gives me royalness that gives me access that gives me uh invincibility and all that so he now goes on to say i know your works which statement he has made on with every of the i mean of the churches i have said before you see i have said before you an open door and no one can shut it you know what he's saying in verse eight it's predicated upon what he said in verse seven upon that introduction i have the key of david when i shut nobody can open when i open nobody can shut he now goes to verse eight to say i have said before you an open door in other words with that key i have opened the door and nobody can shut it because you see i am invincible with that key i have invisibility invincibility and therefore you my people when you operate in this you also are invincible in other words what he has said is this that i have opened a door and i have kept it open hallelujah that nobody can do anything about it you continue to enjoy the openness of that door let's go a little bit forward um it says because you have a little strength and i've kept my word and i've not denied my name three things we notice about the characteristics of this church they have a little strength they have kept his word they have not denied his name very interesting church number one they have a little strength number two they have kept the word of god number three they have not denied the name of jesus christ those are the things that characterize this particular church now jesus said i have opened a door and no man can shut it for means because because of these three things hallelujah so as far as jesus was concerned have you noticed that he didn't seem to be bothered about their little strength he didn't even say, I will increase your strength. He didn't even say, even though your strength is little, I myself will be your strength. He didn't say anything like that. He didn't seem to be bothered about their strength at all. He went on to say, you have a little strength, but you have kept my word. In other words, as long as you keep my word, hallelujah, that's okay by me. As long as you keep my word, every other thing will follow. Every other thing will fall in place. Praise God. He says, and then you, yeah, they have not denied his name. That they have not denied this. And so talking about how to make God um, um, open a door before you or lead you to an open door and keep that door open. It's like as long as you continue to keep his word. This thing is very, very consistent because you see, you remember what he says to uh, Joshua. He says, if you keep this word and do not let it depart from your eyes and from your mouth. In other words, as you read, you also make confessions about it. Amen. It did not de depart from your eyes and also from your lips. Hallelujah. Then you are going to have good success. You are going to make your way prosperous and all kinds of promise promises. Then in Psalm 1, again, he says, blessed is it, blessed is that. And when it goes to the person that keeps the word of God. It says he will be like a tree planted by rivers of water, whose leaves will never, will never fade, whose fruiting will be per, well, your perpetual, perpetual fruiting, and this and that and that and that. He said that. In Psalm 112, he says things like that. Anybody who delights in the word of the Lord, in the law of the Lord, a lot of great promises follow it and things and things and things. Now, he says here, I, I have set an open door before you because he gave a reason. Hallelujah. He gave a reason. So you will not be bothered about your numerical strength. You will not be bothered about if you just continue to walk in his word, to keep his word, he will multiply you. The word of God himself itself will work for you. He says, I, I commend you unto the word of God, which is able to build you up, which is able to give you an inheritance. Hallelujah. So you see, if they have a little strength today, the openness of the door will bring about an increase in strength. Hallelujah. Amen. And so many other things that you will bring about. You just keep living by the word. The Lord will keep before us an open door. Praise God. And that's the way to go about it, honestly. All those scriptures we went back to in, in Joshua 1.8, in Psalm 1.1, in Psalm 12, and several other places, especially Psalm 19. You find all those things being fulfilled in your life, you know, because of this particular thing. And the openness of the door. Remember that we spread the, the, the key symbolizes number one, the, the royalty or the regalness. The key symbolizes access, you know, hallelujah, and then symbolizes invincibility. The Lord will give you, let us group these things together, invincible access of a royal quality. Hallelujah. That's what that, I like it that way. Invincible access of a royal quality, royal dimension. That's what the Lord is promising here. Let's move on now. He says, I will make those of the synagogues. Can you remember the synagogue of Satan? 
I said that Jesus was the one who turned their name around. I forgot what they call that thing, and you know, in in English and you know, and all that. They they like to call themselves the synagogue of God, the synagogue of depth, or some funny thing like that, trying to say they are the ones who know the deep things. And Jesus called them the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> okay, who say they are Jews but are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Ah, oh, lovely. We're going to stop it here today and continue next time around. But even this one is a big one what is saying to me today is this now these people who are they appear they are actually big in terms of numbers and things like that nevertheless they are not really people of the lord nevertheless they are not really people who are who are you know uh doing the will of god who are leading the ship of god in the right direction he says i will make them bow before you is a matter of time Hallelujah. And therefore, I'm encouraging somebody today. It seems because somebody actually come to me once before and said, ah, it seems like God has to do something about those of us who are really preaching the word, you know, and all that. God will make these characters come and bow before you. It's a matter of time. That's what, that's what the Lord has promised. He says, these people who call themselves people who are deep, who, but Jesus called them synagogue of Satan. Okay, praise God. He says, you will make them come and bow before you. Don't you worry. Continue with what you are doing. Keep maintaining the word of God. In fact, the very next verse, which are going to come in to the next time we come around here when would that be now thursday yeah the next time we come around here you will see it there he says that you just keep at the word of god and see what i'm going to do the lord number one he says he's going to open the door and he will keep it open on account of the keys and i gave you the properties of that wonderful key that we jesus was quoting from Isaiah 22 22 you know and all that and it will give you because of that key hallelujah Many other things will fall in place in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's stop here. It's been pretty long. Let's stop here and then allow you to go to work and enjoy your day. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for being here. We really appreciate you. God bless you.